Welcome to Z Techniques training on an Atlas Copco ZR132 oil free compressor. Today, what we're going to learn is how to pull out the coolers and inspect them. We're going to remove the elements and all the ancillary components that are connected to the ZR132 compressor. Let's begin. Initially, we're going to turn down the compressor. What we've got to remember first is that the compressor should be isolated electrically and mechanically and the compressor should be completely depressurized before we start work. Let's look at the first task, which is going to be removing the coolers. Note that we use the bolts from the cover to enable us to jack the component away from the cooler housing. You'll also note that there's O-rings on the cover as shown. These will be removed and replaced for rebuilding the compressor. Also check the cooler faces for any debris that might be present or any damage or signs of leaking tubes. Let's focus on the HP side of the compressor now, the high pressure element side. First of all, remove all the sensor cables. This, there's no damage to them. And if it's a larger machine than this, actually remove the sensors, but make a note of where they fit. Remove the drains from the compressor, the intercooler and the aftercooler drains. We'll get to overall in those later in the next video. You can see that we use the bolts from the cover to actually jack off the component from the steel ring. Use a couple of pinch bars once you get a gap and this will help you prise the outer casing from the steel ring. Take note, everything is held in place by dowels. This ensures that you get the components back in the right place. Use the jacking bolts once again for the steel and steel ring removal. Take note of the position of the O-rings. You can see the one that drops off fits on the back of the steel ring. You'll also note the bushes that fit inside the steel ring and fit on the dowels on the housing. Make sure these are in good condition. Note the o-ring that you have to remove before you attempt to pull the cooler out of the housing block. Use the same method once again, using the jacking bolts to remove the housing cover. Don't forget to remove the O-ring to enable the cooler, the after cooler, to be withdrawn out of the housing on the hot side. It's very important that you check the condition of the coolers Look at the internal bores and see if any debris has become stuck to the flutes. Check and check again. Knocking out the coolers in this way is a standard practice, but sometimes the coolers are quite badly stuck and you have to use a hydraulic jack to actually push the coolers out. These are coming out relatively easy. You don't need a crane, they're quite light to carry. If the coolers, when removed, are full of dirt or debris, make sure you steam clean them, or in some cases you might have to get them chemically cleaned. Take a good look at the coolers before reusing them in the overhauled compressor.
Check the chambers for corrosion or damage to the fins. Also, make sure you remove all the O-rings from the chambers. Now we're going to remove the stage one and stage three elements. Take a look at the list of tools that you need, you particularly the special banana shaped spanner. That will enable you to get to the bolts on the high pressure element yeah. very easily. Generally, most items just need a light tap, as shown here, just to free them from the O-rings bonded to the surfaces. Make sure you protect the O-ring now. Check inside, make sure no bolts or items have fallen inside, and protect the top of the element with some tape, as shown. We're removing the HP discharge silencer, which also contains the non-return valve. Here we're unfastening the oil return pipe that goes to the sump of the gearbox. Here we're putting the eye bolt in the correct position for a straight lift of the air end. We're removing the water pipes to make it easier to remove the LP element. If there are any questions you have so far, we can stop the video and discuss them. Now we need to remove the throttle assembly. We're going to go over all this as a separate video at a later time. Make sure you protect the sensor cables as previously discussed so when you put them back on the machine they work perfectly. We're now going to remove the low pressure element. You can see we've used two eye bolts and a sling to get a perfectly straight lift. This will enable the element to come off with minimum fuss and avoid any damage to the main gear assembly or the pinion gear on the air end itself. Note, there are two O-rings involved with the LP element fitment. One is the small O-ring, which has actually remained stuck to the gearbox, and the other O-ring is the large one, which seals the outer edge of the element to the gear case. We're going to pop back the small O-ring just to show you where it goes. This is the oil feed, so it's very important. Okay, now we're going to remove the HP element. As you can see, we're using a banana shaped spanner that enables you to easily get access to the small bolts. These can be quite tricky to unfasten. Again, the same as the stage three LP element, we're just going to smoothly lift it off. Okay, as we turn it round, you can see there's the outer O ring and the small o-ring has once again been stuck to the gear case so we're going to pop that back in place just to show you where that oil feed goes. Check the gears inside the gearbox and on the element itself to make sure there is no wear. You can easily check these at this stage. The outer cover of the oil pump is retained by an O-ring. Prising it off makes it easy to remove. Make sure you check the face of the oil pump and inside the faces of the oil pump to make sure there's been no scratching or rubbing of the gears. By inserting a screwed rod as shown, you can pull out the outer ring of the oil pump. It should slide out quite easily. Then you can pull the gear off the shaft. If it's a little bit tight, wiggle it a little until it comes free. 
check for wear marks on the surfaces of the oil pump. Here we're using a magnetic tool just to pull the back cover off. Now we've completely removed the oil pump from the housing. What you need to do now is make sure you block up the compressor side with wood because once you take the motor off, the entire gearbox is only going to be supported on two rubber feet. So make sure you do that as a safety aspect. Here we're showing you which bolts you remove on the foot of the motor. Once these are removed and you hoist the motor up a little, you can move the foot and now you're in a position to start prising the motor back from the gearbox as shown. We're just using a pinch bar to pull the coupling off its rubbers inside the housing. This makes it very easy now to slide back the motor, but before you can put the motor on the ground, you have to remove the foot off the base of the motor, otherwise you could damage it. We're going to see that next. Here you can see we can easily remove the foot off the base of the motor, which makes it easier to palletize the motor and not damage the foot for it when you come to replace it back on the compressor. Next, we have to remove the bell housing before we can actually withdraw the gear assembly and coupling. Once we've undone a number of bolts, we place a sling as shown, and you can slowly tap off the bell housing from the gearbox, making sure, of course, that you've supported the weight. What we're doing here is having a look at the coupling rubbers. These are the earlier type, but if you give us your serial number, we'll make sure we supply you with the correct coupling rubbers. The next action is placing three dowels as shown, which will enable us to slide the gearbox back slowly from the housing. But first we have to tap the gear back as shown with a mallet. And now we can safely pull the housing back on the spigots until it's safely removed. Make sure you use an adequate lift from above. Now we're going to withdraw the bearing from the housing, which is quite simple. It should just come out by hand, providing you've got it square. And that forms the end of the first video. We're going to move to video two, which is going to show overhauling each individual component. Thank you for watching.